Good evening, everyone. I'm Ernie Anastas. I'm Brenda Blackman. Also next to 10, Cardinal O'Connor at the hour of his death. And also ahead, a deadly building collapse, plus investing in stocks with a psychic. And your chance to vote for the new Star Trek show next. You're watching UPMI News, winner of the Edward R. Morrow Award for Overall Excellence. The Cardinal is at the hour of his death. Tonight, a man of God, a leader of millions, John Cardinal O'Connor, New York's Archbishop, dead at 80. Good evening, everyone. We have just received word that John Cardinal O'Connor has died. In other news tonight... A building collapsed in the South Bronx has left one worker dead and three others injured. Thank you, Kathleen. All right, now let's check in on the weather. Here's Storm Field. All right, what we have right now are temperatures not much of a range anywhere. Readings pretty much in the mid-50s throughout the tri-state area. All right, thank you, Storm. We'll be back in just a minute. Still ahead for you tonight, the psychic who claims that his tarot cards can pick stocks. Our high team puts his predictions to the test. Also, outrage over Panty Raiders, a video game in which you search for supermodels in their underwear. And how you can become part of Star Trek history by picking the ultimate Star Trek spin-off. It's your vote when UPN 9 News returns in just 60 seconds. And now, tonight's UPN 9 News Rundown. today's newspaper might have caught your attention. It's a new campaign by the police union that takes aim at what it calls the NYPD's low pay. Kelly Carey tells us it's causing quite a controversy. The city of New York is a very, very big city. And therefore, the kinds of uh, levels of pay in the city of New York are not going to be the same as the levels of pay in a suburban county. Are you looking to hit it big in the stock market? Imagine if you had psychic powers that could help you pick the real money makers. That's what one man is claiming that he can do. But IT investigator Matthew Schwartz has been checking out his claims. He joins us tonight with the story. Matthew? Well, Brenda, some stock analysts might say he doesn't know Wall Street and that he's off the wall. But he says he's on the money. And he calls himself the psychic investor. <laughs> It is an unusual mix, the psychic and the stock market. I am the uh, author of this here book, The Psychic Investor. Marcus Goodwin is selling his book and his unorthodox stock-picking technique to members of the New York Society of Security Analysts. His audience is somewhat sleepy and skeptical. And when did you wake up one morning to decide you were psychic? Goodwin says it came to him as a young boy when he saw visions of events before they happened. He became a stockbroker and now uses his powers to make money in the market. What I've come up with is, is the intuitive part of it. Goodwin uses mostly tarot cards and a pendulum to pick stocks. This way means up. This way means down. This way means don't know. But Goodwin emphasizes that he does thorough research first. I look at charts, I look at fundamentals, and then what I do is I begin to uh, run a stock through the psychic. Uh, while I'm reading financial information, I'll pull out 15 cards, and it triggers the subconscious, and, and then the, the process begins, and uh, perhaps a power greater than ourselves steps in. Goodwin claims he's been accurate with 80% of his picks, and says this to cynics. Hey, Wall Street Pro starts with the Wall Street Journal. I mean, that's, they publish those picks. And why do sometimes dart swingers uh, beat out the top analysts on Wall Street? While Goodwin may be psychic, he also seems absent-minded. Where did they go? They're hiding on you. I, I have I have lost my slide. I'm looking blindly. Focus. Let's go. Goodwin speaks for an hour and sells a few books as part of his promotional tour. What do you say to critics? who tell you, hey, Marcus, you just wrote this book. You gave it the sexy title, Psychic Investor, but it's really not that psychic. It's more based on logic and research. Hmm. 
Um, you know, for those who believe, there's no explanation necessary. For those who don't believe, there is an explanation enough. This audience of mostly conservative market analysts is surprisingly open to Goodwin's methods. I'm a little doubtful, I must admit. Maybe a lot doubtful about it. You're not going to try any of his methods before you buy your next stock? Uh, am I going to? No, I'm not going to try any of his methods. I think the principle's in the right place. I don't know about the techniques, but if it works for him, so be it. If that's what he's looking to trade with, and if he's having success with it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Goodwin also has a website, MarcusGoodwin.com, in which he picks his hot stock. And he does private consultations for $85 an hour. My mission is to say, hey, psychic phenomena has been around for centuries. It's been applied uh, in, in witchcraft shops and in the back parlors and, you know, with lizard heads and various approaches. And here's something that can literally be used for the common investor. Now, the psychic investor recommended 14 stocks in the first quarter, that's January through March. If you had bought one share of each company's stock on April 1st, you'd have paid $654.32, not counting broker's commissions. If you sold those shares right now, you'd get $523.38, minus commissions, of course. That's a net loss of $130.94, or just over 20%. The psychic investor's big winner was Dell Computer, up over 30%. His big loser, Cisco Systems, down a whopping 64%. But to be perfectly fair about this, the stock markets have been in a nosedive in recent weeks, and nobody really has been cashing in. Brenda and Ernie. All right, thank you, Matthew.